For your mercy never fails me In all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God How 
sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives but greater still the calm We are so glad that you have joined us. Um, if you're watching this live stream, uh, we are glad that you uh, have uh, tuned in and hope that you are greeting one another on the chat. If you are watching at another time on our YouTube channel, we're glad you're here uh, watching whenever, wherever you are, whenever it is. Um, some announcements before we uh, get started with our worship this morning. Uh, our reentry team met again this past week and is making some recommendations to our leadership board. Um, and we're gonna be meeting two times this coming week to discuss and make decisions that will, that will guide um, us as to how and when uh, we will gather in person for worship. And so we would ask that you would be in prayer for us as we discuss and as we make decisions. And, and we know that regardless of when we do decide it's good for us to be back together in the same room, uh, we know that, that many of you will not be ready to, to come back. You will not feel comfortable coming back. And so, I, again, I just want to reassure you that we're going to continue to provide these online services indefinitely um, so that we can be together even when we can't all be together in the same room. Uh, so please pray for us this week as we, as we talk about that. We do have something fun coming up this week. It's a Taco Tuesday tailgate and caravan. And so we hope you will join us on Tuesday night. Uh, our, our meal team is going to create a taco, kind of a walking taco experience for us. And um, we're gonna gather in our back parking lot and we're going to maintain careful social distancing, park every other uh, space. Um, but just have some time where we're uh, safely in the same area, able to talk to one another and enjoy some company. Um, we really need you to RSVP for this um, so that we know um, how many uh, meals to prepare for. And so if you have not already um, filled out that survey and you can, please do so. Um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, if you would just email um, the church office 
um, or uh, give a, the church office a call and leave an answer, a, a message on the answering machine uh, today, uh, today being Sunday, we'll, um, we'll make sure we get those numbers in so that we can do it on Wednesday. Um, please remember to bring your own uh, soda or water, if you will. And uh, we'll also have uh, someone who will be uh, blessing us with, um, uh, with a fundraising project that she started. Ella Rockowitz, one of our middle school students, um, is making and selling magnets. And the money that she uh, collects for that is going to the Sheboygan Food Bank. And so she'll be there. Um, we're not quite sure if she'll have a stand set up or if she'll be kind of moving through uh, the parking lot or what, but, um, but she'll be there selling her magnets and we would love for you to support her in that as she raises money for the food bank. Um, there are a lot of you who are serving in lots of different ways. And so we ask that, um, uh, we're creating a little serving mo moment right now. And so if you've been serving the past week or two and wanna share that with us, You've made a meal for a friend. You've done some grocery shopping for someone. Uh, you helped with lawn work, whatever it is. Um, would you please let us know? We just kind of want to, we want to be aware of how people are serving one another at this time. And also, if we see good ideas, we want to we share them so that we can, we can replicate them and spread them out through, throughout our community. Um, one of the serving moments that we'll do Tuesday night uh, because I said it was Taco Tuesday tailgate and caravan. Um, at the end of our meal, um, we are going to form little caravans and drive. We're going to have different routes that take us through different parts of the city. And we're going to stop by some of our um, uh, elderly homebound members and um, just stop and greet them. Um, some of our kids are working on little, little uh, signs that say, we love you and um, there will be cards that we give them, and we just are going to greet them because um, it's been a long time since uh, they often can't get out as, as easily as we can, and, and that's just the, one of the ways that we want to serve and care for them. So we hope that you will, that you will participate in this with us, and again, um, that's Tuesday night, and if you would RSVP today, uh, that would be very helpful for us as well. I think that's it for the announcements, so um, let's... Take a moment of quiet and prepare our hearts for worship. Lord, as we gather across time and space, we pray that you would unite us with your spirit so that we may be lifted up into your presence and may worship you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We ask that your, your spirit would be mighty at this time and that everything that happens will be for the glory of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's worship the Lord together. And 
all will be new. Your name forever, faithful and true. Cause Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be a church.
we were singing, um, the psalm I read this morning came to mind. Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture. We are the flock under his care. Our world is not experiencing peace right now, but we as believers can experience peace because our God reigns and he moves mountains and he watches over us. And so as we uh, turn our attention from singing and worship to request and prayer, uh, just remember who we are praying to and how big he is. Let's pray together. Lord God, you are the one who was and who is and who is to come. You are the creator of seasons and time. You see the past, the present, and the future. Uh, from the moment we were conceived, you have been with us. And you have guided us into this very moment now. And, and you will continue to watch over us into the future. Lord God, we are in a hard season, a difficult moment, a time of unrest. Our world is shaken by a virus we cannot see and by protests we can see. Our world is shaken and we feel powerless, afraid, angry, anxious. Our world is shaken and we need to be reminded that you are in control, that the world is still firmly in your hands, that you are leading us and your creation to a good future, to a new heavens and a new earth. Lord God, we are in a season where our own future is unknown but we are also in a season where change is possible. And we pray that you would show us how we can change, how we need to change. Show us how we as Americans can change. Show us how we as uh, Christians can change. How we as Bethany can change. How we as Families and individuals can change. Lead us, strengthen us, guide us, encourage us, protect us. Do not give up on us. Lord God, we know that many in our congregation, in our families are suffering. They are in need of healing and comfort and encouragement. We pray for a quick healing for Christy Leonard as she recovers from surgery. We pray for a full recovery for Ken and Vi's foster daughter, Jean. We pray for Elaine Lammers, who is in the hospital with heart conditions. 
We pray for Nathan Schultz who, as he begins aggressive cancer treatments this week. We lift up all those who are facing uh, medical procedures this, this week, whatever they look like, small or large. And we also remember Jared Reculitis, Murray and Penny, Bob Haman, Deb and Jim, Bob Bevins, Colleen, Ernie, Sharon, Joan, Ron, Ray. And we remember in the silence of this moment those others who are on our individual hearts and minds. Lord God, we ask that you would guide the leadership of Bethany as we discuss and decide on when and how we should gather in our building. We acknowledge that this is not an easy decision, and we recognize that no matter what happens, some will be hurt, afraid, or even angry. And so we ask that you would show us what you want. We ask that you would reveal to us your will for Bethany. Give us wisdom as we make the decisions we need to make. And more importantly, give us your spirit of love and humility and unity as we discuss our options. Lord God, we pray to you, not as some distant and detached deity. We pray to you as Father, as a Father who already knows what we need, as a Father who always has our best interests in mind, as a Father who loves us and adores us. We pray these words uh, that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, One of the groups of people that we are praying for these days is our graduates. uh, Because it's a messy time for graduates this year. And we actually only have one high school graduate this year, Rachel Carlson. So Rachel is coming up with her mom and dad. Jane and Steve, (laughs) and uh, we are just so happy for you and also grieving with you that this time is so hard and so confusing, Um, but we know God has great things for you, and we will continue to pray for you. Um, We have two other graduates as well that are college graduates. We have James Thone and Jenna Zelm. Uh, Information on all of our graduates is in the bulletin, so uh, maybe after the service, Uh, print that out and and you can look at what they've done and where they're going. And uh, for now, though, we are going to pray for them. Let's pray together. Lord God, we celebrate our graduates who are standing between past and future. Their hard work is done and we celebrate their accomplishments. They are stepping towards a new future, Uh, whether that be college or graduate school, work or ministry. uh, They are eager for the next season of their life and also unsure, maybe even scared. We thank you for Rachel, for James, for Jenna. We thank you for their families that have supported them so faithfully as they have studied. Uh, We thank you for the work you have done in them and will continue to do in them. We thank you for the future that you are leading them to. We pray that you would bless them. Uh, Bless them not only as individuals, but bless them as members of your body, of your church. Let them grow up into uh, servants, leaders, people who make a difference in your world for your kingdom. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We've asked Rachel to sing a song for us that will continue our worship, helping us to think about uh, the season that we are in right now.
before she does that, I will tell you about the offering. Um, we are taking our offering at this time. And before, and as you get ready to do that, um, I also want to uh, welcome again visitors who are with us. And um, so if you don't normally uh, attend Bethany, um, you're checking us out online. Hey, welcome. We are so glad that you are here. There's a little uh, visitor moment um, in the chat box. If you are streaming this live, um, we would love it if you would just click on that and give us your information. But just let us know that you've, you've been watching, watching us and we'll just reach out and say hi to you. But we hope that you uh, do that. And um, also we are going to continue our worship with our giving of our tithes and offerings. Um, as always, there are three ways to do this. There's a giving button on the page if you're watching this live stream. Or if you're not and want to give, uh, there is the text um, that you can uh, text to. Or, um, or you can always just mail a check in and uh, your gift in, and that's on the screen as well. But let us continue now to worship with our tithes and offerings.
Thank you, Rachel. It's beautiful. We are in a season, aren't we? Uh, and actually, it feels like the season is shifting, changing. Uh, we heard on Friday that we are no longer in phase one, but in phase two. And what does that mean? And what does that look like? Um, and, and we're entering into the summer season, which has a different rhythm and has a different feel to it. And this summer, we decided that we wanted to uh, focus on how we can make contact with one another, how we can... Uh, move back into contact with one another. Um, so we're going to be looking at the one another's of the New Testament. There are actually quite a few uh, one another's in the New Testament. Love one another, forgive one another, honor one another. Three times it says greet one another with a holy kiss. We're going to have to talk about that. But uh, we're going to uh, explore these together to see uh, what it would look like for us to gather back together well. Uh, we have an opportunity here to grow and so that's what we're going to do. Is we're going to seek to grow. Um, our passage this morning comes from the book of Philippians. It's the letter that Paul wrote to the church in Philippi. We call it the book of Philippians. Uh, we're going to read chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Uh, the words will be on your screen if you'd like to join us. But before, um, before we do that, let's once again just go to God and ask him to bless the reading of his word. Gracious God, we are finding... Uh, it hard to listen these days. We are in str under stress. Uh, we, there's change happening all around us, and the more that things change, the harder it is to, to listen and be aware of, of what you want us to hear and learn and do. And so we ask that in this moment, when we hear your word and when we, when we think about what you have called us to do, that your spirit would be at work in us, helping me speak clearly, helping us to listen well, uh, helping us all to have kind of a clarity of mind that we need to understand and to do what you are asking us to do. We ask this for the glory of Jesus. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, starting with verse 1. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit... If any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. Have in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. This is God's word to us today. Thanks be to God. We live in a world of opposites. That's not news. Uh, we live in a world that tends to lean towards uh, either you're for or against. It, it's either black or white. It's either right or wrong. Uh, and if we're not together, if our beliefs don't seem to line up, then we tend to put up our guard. If you don't agree with me, then I have to ask myself whether we are enemies. We live in a world of opposites. And this is especially true when we feel threatened, when we are under stress. And we are under stress, aren't we? Uh, we have all lost what's normal to us because of a virus. Our economy is staggering. Uh, major cities are setting curfews to manage protests against the police. Our world feels like it's collapsing. Collapsing. And when we feel like it's collapsing, uh, we tend to circle the wagons, look for those who agree with us, lock arms, and embrace for a fight. And all of this seems so different from the Bible story we heard last week. Uh, last week, we celebrated the story of the church's beginning. Uh, it couldn't have been more different from our experience. Let me remind you by reading just a couple of verses. <clears throat> all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And a little later, we read this. 
All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. I read verses like that and wonder, how is this possible? How was that possible? Is it possible now? Could we ever experience the unity of the early church? Could we ever be one in heart and mind? Because this oneness, this unity is not our experience, is it? Uh, The church in America is as segregated and divided as our society. Uh, We are divided over how to read the Bible, how people are saved, over communion and baptism, whether or not women should be in leadership. Even in our own church, even at Bethany, we've experienced conflict over leadership and vision. And and now we're bracing for a conversation about when to resume uh, worship services in our building. After all, some churches have been meeting for weeks. Others have decided to wait. And I'm sure that when we come to our decision, there will be some at Bethany who will be angry if we wait longer, and some who will be disappointed and upset if we open too soon and put people at risk. We, we seem to be a long way from the togetherness, the one heart and one mind of the early church. But we're not. Uh, We're not really so different from the early church. Uh, On on the one hand, I have seen growing unity here at Bethany over the past months and years. Uh, We have been trying to communicate well, though we could always do better. Uh, We have been drawing together, creating spaces for us to be together through Cafe Bethany and our Wednesday night meals. Our Tuesday night tailgate is just another example of, of how we value being together having relationships with one another, being able to spend time together. We created community groups so that we could care for one another, shepherd one another better. Our leadership, our pastors, elders, deacons, staff, we're always asking ourselves how we can work together better. How can we break down those silos that naturally form when you have two different groups trying to lead together? Bethany has been working together, working towards being more united. Uh, So we are becoming more like the early church that way. But we also have to admit that the early church didn't experience perfect unity, at least not for long. Now, the early church was unified at the beginning, but in the beginning, almost everyone was in the same situation. Uh, They were all alike. They were all Jewish believers living in Israel. They shared the same history and background. They all knew and followed the Hebrew scriptures. They were united by their experience of Jesus and the ministry of his apostles. And the church spread beyond Jerusalem and Judea, beyond their Jewish roots and history, beyond their local customs and practices. The church became international. The church became a mix of races and people groups. The church became a group of people with no common background at all. Scott McKnight, a teacher and author I have learned from, points out that a typical house church in the ancient city of Rome included these people. Men and women, and let me remind you that men and women then had very different social standings, freedoms, and rights. Men and women citizens and freed slaves and slaves who had no legal rights, Jews and Gentiles, people from all moral walks of life, and perhaps most notably, people from elite classes all the way down the social scale to homeless people. The early church was a group of people who were different from each other, very different. And uniting these differences was not easy. In fact, it was hard work. Uh, Just read through Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. He starts this way. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. And still another, I follow Christ. 
divisions, quarrels. Paul dealt with these kinds of differences in every church that he planted. Because every church he planted was made up of people whom the world had already divided into different groups, different classes, different statuses, education, wealth, race. Doesn't that sound a little bit like us? Bethany has people who vote Republican and those who vote Democrat. Bethany has people who listen to Fox News and others who listen to CNN and others who listen to NPR and others who listen to CBN and some who don't listen to anything at all. Bethany has people who attend college, attended college and those who did not. Bethany has people who, who see the world as business people and others who see the world as educators and still others who see the world as police officers and firefighters and other public servants. Bethany has members who were raised Catholic or Lutheran or Presbyterian or Baptist or non-denominational, charismatic, and, and of course, Reformed. Uh, we have people who enjoy a very comfortable lifestyle and those who have a more modest lifestyle and those whose budgets always seem to be really tight. Of course, we're in Wisconsin, so we have Packer fans and Brewer fans and uh, Bucks fans. But, you know, ask around, and I bet you'll find a few Cubs and Bear fans in our membership as well. And, and then there are those of us who really don't care who you root for. But, but even with our differences, uh, even with these significant differences, we're not as different as the early church. We are all mostly white. Uh, most of us are, come from in the, the same culture, uh, none of us are slaves or homeless, but still we face the same challenges and differences that the early church faced. The message God wanted the early church, the churches in the New Testament to hear, is the same message he wants us to hear. God wants us to be unified, to work towards unity, to make an effort to be together, to have the main, same mindset, attitude, goal. In our passage this morning, Philippians 2, Paul starts by reminding the church of what they share. Let me use the message paraphrase because it highlights how Paul is setting up his challenge. He asks, if, any, if you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor. What Paul is asking is this. Has your Christian experience been a good thing for you? Does belonging to a community, God's community, make a difference in your life? Have you been treated at all warmly? Then make sure that's true for everybody. Paul encourages, challenges them to agree with each other, love each other, be deep-spirited friends. He tells us, don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget about yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Now, what Paul is doing here is he's circling around something. He's drawing circles um, that are going to create a target, and he identifies for us what the center of that target is. He nails his point with a single line. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. In the way you behave towards one another, in the way you treat one another, in the way that you interact with one another, have the same mindset, the same attitude, the same way of approaching things as Christ Jesus. Paul is simply telling us to be like Jesus, imitate Jesus, make Jesus the one we, are, we want to be like, and to be intentional about it. 
So that means we need to watch how Jesus interacted with others, people who were very different from him. We need to focus on Jesus and imitate his way of being with people, his way of listening, his way of caring. Uh, We need to try to treat others as Jesus treated them. Listen like he listened. Reach out like he reached out. Serve like he served. We are to have the same attitude as Jesus, the same mindset. And this is where our unity is to come from. It is to grow out of our intention to be like Jesus. Now, this isn't going to be easy. Uh, It's never been easy. Uh, And now, uh, our differences are as visible as the masks we wear or refuse to wear. And working towards unity when so much of the world is taking sides, it's going to be a challenge. But it's never been easy. Seeking unity, working together, uh, allowing for and even celebrating our differences has never come naturally to us as humans. And if it's up to us, frankly, if it's just about us trying harder, we are going to fail and fail miserably. We need what the early church needed. We need the Holy Spirit to, to rain down on us to give us passion, uh, not to fight, but to pursue unity. Uh, Not an easy unity, not a unity that ignores our differences, sweeps them under the rug, or forces conformity, but a unity that works through and with our differences, with love. So I I end by asking you, uh, who will shape your mind this summer? Who will shape your thinking? Who will shape your attitude? Will you continue to be shaped by Fox, by MSNBC, by CBN? Will you continue to defend your tribe and its party line? Or will you seek to know the mind of Christ and seek towards the unity that only the Holy Spirit can bring? Gracious God, we are in a season that you have created for us. And we know that uh, this season uh, is not going to be over quickly. And there is no simply going back. There is only moving forward to a new reality. Some of which will feel normal and some of which will, some of which will not. And our call as we move into and through this change is to have the same attitude as Jesus Christ. It's been our call all along, but now with our differences heightened, it's going to be more important, more crucial that we intentionally seek to be like him in our relationship with each other. So we ask that your Holy Spirit would be on us as we find our way, as we seek to engage each other well, clasp hands and work together toward your kingdom. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. May the words of my mouth And the thoughts of my heart Bless your name, bless your name, Jesus And the deeds of the day And the truth in my ways Speak of you, speak of you, Jesus For this is what I'm glad to do It's time to live a life of love that pleases you And I will give my all to you Surrender everything I have and follow you I'll follow you
That's your prayer. We hope that your prayer right now is that um, your heart would be so given to God that you would give it all to follow him. Uh, what that looks like um, for you beyond just good intentions um, is a different question, though. And so one of the things we're going to do this summer is we're going to send you an, an email each Monday or early in the week. And... Um, give you some ideas about how uh, to take your intention and put it into practice. Little ways, little steps that you can take. So um, make that your prayer today. Lord, I want to follow you. Help me to, help me to give you my all. And then be looking for ways that God might invite you into doing that. Know that as you do this, you do not do it alone. We are never alone. We have each other, but more importantly, we have the Holy Spirit. So know that uh, the love of Jesus Christ, the grace of the Father, and the presence of the Holy Spirit will be with you this week as you seek to follow. Go in grace and peace. Praise God from whom.